Welcome to Coffee Access Travel. My name is Erin Donaldson, your host for all things related to lifestyle, gastronomy, and tourism in the Eje Cafetero of Colombia. Our goal for these episodes is to keep it 30 minutes or even slightly under, because that is the average commute time by bus in almost any city of the coffee access, including Manizales, Pereira, and Armenia. Bus rides get more interesting in the Eje because now you can actually connect with things you need to know about the culture, lifestyle, gastronomy, and local news. If you're traveling between cities, be sure to get caught up on previous episodes or watch our videos by subscribing to our Patreon VIP tour. Um, this is our first episode. <laughs> And we hope to bring you weekly episodes. We're not sure if that's what's going to happen, but we hope to bring you weekly episodes as we get into a better swing of things. If it's too much with the editing, we'll do it every other week. But to learn about our new episodes, be sure to sign up with Patreon. All the different tiers will have uh, up free updates for when our podcast comes out. Be sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel at Coffee Access Travel. Just search on YouTube, Coffee Access Travel, you'll be able to find us there. So let's get started. In news, we have some special events to bring you and some not so positive events to tell you about. But first, we have Reto Sazon. Coming this weekend in Manizales, Reto Sazon, or the Seasoning Challenge. This is a gastronomic event where top restaurants offer special pricing to try a signature dish curated especially for the event. Starting June 27th through July 7th, the event is hosted by Finalco Caldas and Revista Gourmet Cafetero. Revista Gourmet Cafetero is similar in nature to Coffee Access Travel, but in Spanish. Um, you should be able to find more information about this event by going to the Facebook page for uh, Re Revista Gourmet Cafetero. You can also search on Facebook, Reto Sazon. In Colombia, most events and a lot of the information you're going to find is going to be in Facebook or Instagram. Keep in mind, Facebook has the groups and has a more interactive format, whereas Instagram is more of a photo-based um, video photo format where you'll be able to get the images, you'll be able to get the concepts, but unfortunately Facebook and WhatsApp are two really important platforms in Colombia for not only communicating, but also finding out a lot of information. We learned the hard way many years ago that if we didn't have WhatsApp on our phone, we didn't get any contacts or calls or messages or anything. My first few years, I was really stubborn about it. So don't be like me. Just download the WhatsApp app, stay in touch with your friends here in Colombia. And I know a lot of people don't like Facebook. I get it. We all want to burn it and dump it and delete it. But come on now, just keep scrolling. Just keep scrolling when you see this stuff you don't like. Anyways, check out Rest Reto Sazon. Many of the top local restaurants will be participating, both high-end cuisine, fast food, and even some of the in-between Colombian restaurants. As the essence of this event is one special dish that each restaurant will create and that you'll be able to try for a special price if you go out and eat between July, uh, June 27th and July 7th. So definitely check it out. Again, you can go to the Revista Gourmet Cafetero page to learn more about it. In recent news, this last week on Monday, in fact, a cyclist lost her life um, in what appears to be an accident where she lost her brakes. She lost her brakes, she hit a post, and according to this article in La Patria, suffered severe head injuries. This is the third bicycle aficionado that has lost their life this year due to transit accidents. Now, riding bikes is a big thing in Colombia. You will find every type of group you can imagine women's groups, men's groups, even younger children's groups, nighttime groups, morning groups, day groups. You will not believe the number of groups we have for people who like to ride bikes. But if you are riding alone, 
tell people where you're going and make sure your bike is ready to go. Make sure, uh, in this case, this woman by appearance or what they are telling us, she lost her brakes. So, you know, gas her up. Okay, air it up. <laughs> Can't gas up a, a bicycle. But again, if you love the iron horse, make sure everything's in good working condition before you go out. Try not to ride alone if you can help it. And tell someone where you're going. We don't want to see any more tragic accidents happening, happening because of little things like brakes going out. Okay, up next, we have a 38-year-old man who was murdered in Chinchina by a professional assassins. Now, according to this article, it was the fifth attempt, attempt on his life. So, Chinchina. Chinchina is one of these towns that's on a crossroads. And in Colombia, where you hit a crossroads, lots of little businesses tend to cross over. And at least, you know... This can include anything that's illegal. The crossroad cities are often more dangerous. In the case of towns like Alcala, La Virginia, Chinchina, they all fall under the same context as being on major crossroads, roads that go out to different areas, different exits. Um, and unfortunately, places like La Virginia, Viterbo, Chinchina have always had a reputation as being birthplaces of sicarios or assassins. So what's the deal here? This guy left his house in the madrugada. Madrugada in Spanish means early morning. And he was, he was killed. A couple bullets to the head, seems like. And believe me, Colombian assassins, they're pretty professional. Um, we have always been very firm on our stance that Chinchina is not really for expat residents. I've, um, I've got some friends right now who have lived in that area, and they are actually looking to move closer to Mayan Salas because at night and after dark, it's not the safest place to be. And if this economy continues to um, go downhill, some of these places will get more dangerous. That being said, Mayan Salas is still the safest city in Colombia. And remember... Just like back in the U.S., things change one block to another, one area to another, one city to another. So I'm not telling you that the entire coffee axis is dangerous. On the contrary, the coffee axis is probably one of the safest parts of the country. Even so, we do have our hot zones. We do have areas that are less than ideal for an expat to live in. Use caution. Use your horse sense. Don't make a mistake of moving into a cheaper area because sometimes it's cheap for a reason, okay? Moving on. The biggest headline of this week was the arrest of the previous mayor of Pereira, Carlos Maija. He is accused of pocketing public funds. In one article, they indicated that he, the amount of money that he's purported to have stolen from a public works project is in the area of about $500 million. No, $500,000. It was, you know, several bil uh, billions of pesos. This is pretty common, you know, politicians. We have the good, we have the bad, we have the ugly. Nothing new here. Among these charges are the falsifications of documents and fraud. So it looks like he had his arraignment this week. La audiencia, they call it. And we will be following that story. As is uh, <laughs> per normal in Colombia, he will probably get house arrest or have to just pay back some of the money and they'll let him off. Remember, in Colombia. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Um, in sports, did anyone catch the game this week? So this game was the first game of the Copa America. The Copa America tournament is what determines whether Colombia, Selección Colombia is what it's called, the Colombian football team, soccer if you're from the U.S. Um, this will determine whether they go on to World Cup. Now, in the previous um, Amistoso games, as they call them, you know, friendly games, games just to, to keep the practice up, Colombia has won the last 20 games that it was in, including games against countries like the US, Canada, 
and Mexico. So we are hoping that this is going to be a good year for them. So the game on Monday, in this game on Monday, uh, Colombia won 2-1 to one against Paraguay. Stay tuned for more. We'll be following the tournament and we'll let you know how things go as it advances in future episodes. Now let's move on to our next segment. Our next segment is a segment based on lifestyle, culture, and Spanish language concepts. We are not a replacement for going and studying Spanish. We are not um, a Spanish teacher. I am not a Spanish teacher. I am only here to give you some concepts based on my experiences and the experiences that others have had here in Colombia and what we purport to, have to know about the language of Spanish. So today's topic is tu versus usted. Someone asked me recently, what's this thing with usted? Because in Colombia, we use it quite a lot. But in many courses, and even when I was in high school, when I learned Castellano, we learned como esta usted, right? But we didn't really use it much after that. In Colombia, in places like Manizales especially, but in some situations in Bogota as well, when you are in a formal setting, you will use the formal um, phraseology of Spanish. For example, in, in Manizales, that's where I live. It's one of the areas you may visit at some point. It is considered a little bit entraor to use uh, tu. So um, why is this? Why do we use usted in Colombia? In Colombia, we use a much more extensive Castellano vocabulary than in other countries. And we use older modes of speech. This is in part because Colombia was actually quite politically isolated for many years. It was a democratic country in a sea of socialist countries. Countries like Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, you get the picture. Even Central America, places like El Salvador, Nicaragua, Guatemala. So here we are. Um, today, it is considered, Colombia is considered one of the best places to learn Spanish. So back to the use of Usted. Usted is the formal version of tú, which is you. So, some forms of use are ¿Cómo está usted? Or, me dieron el número de usted para averiguar sobre el costo de la renta. I'll say it again. Me dieron el número de usted para averiguar sobre el costo de la renta. Essentially, that means they gave me your number so I could find out how much the rent is. There's a little bit of change in word order with, with the use of usted as well. You won't say, usted quiere café? You could, you could. But, but when we say that, we're going to say, quiere café? And then we might say, usted que quiere? So listen to how your Colombian friends use it. Observe and then see how it goes. Patience. Another use is, ¿Usted prefiere blanco o rojo por las cortinas? ¿Usted prefiere blanco o rojo por las cortinas? Now, again, I'm not a Spanish teacher and I might be off on a few of my phrasings, but I'm trying to give you some ideas of how we use usted in Manizales. And what I just said was, do you prefer white or red curtains? So if you're out shopping, if you are in a business situation, if you are with people who, who are just, you know, people you just met, not really people that you know, it's considered nice, especially with the older generations, to use usted. Remember, tú is okay with friends and family. Tú qué crees? What do you think? ¿Cómo estás? Tú qué? You what? So things like that. Um, but especially in Manizales, try to use usted and try to observe the use of usted when you refer to the person you're talking to. It will help you to come across better in your communications, as this journalist learned many times over the last few years living and working in Manizales. On, now on to our next segment, 
to tourism. Tourism. Today's topic is mule rides in Colombia, specifically La Ruta de Arriería. <laughs> La Ruta de Arriería, or the Mule Teamsters Route, is a confluence of ideas of a, a region of Caldas where just after 2020, several people who work in tourism began to put that type of label on it. It's a label I started to use, but I did not, obviously I did not invent it. I'm just one of many who started to use it around the time, um, post-pandemic, around that time. And we're putting together more and more routes. For example, in Marlanda, we have La Ruta de la Lana. In another occasion, I will talk to you about that one. But La Ruta de Arreria, or the Mule Teamster Route, is considered to be some of these trails, some of these back roads that go up through the north of Caldas. Aguades, Pacora, Salamina, Neira, Arrezazu, all these are little towns coming down south from Sonson, Antioquia, to Manizales. And many of these original trails still exist, and we still ride some of these trails in special horse rides or cabalgatas. Some of the biggest cabalgatas in the north of Caldas celebrate this history by having all mule rides, that means only mules. And they cover rough terrain that horses can't do. It is not unusual for some of these all mule rides or cabalgatas to forge through muddy sumps and climb up over mountain precipices to demonstrate their strength and sure-footedness and the agility of our long-eared friends. Mule teamsters in Colombia were the original truckers before vehicles became accessible. To this day, there are still many areas all over Colombia that use mule teams to bring products to market. One of the, the most um, notable remaining areas where you will see some of the working mule teams is the coffee axis, specifically the Department of Caldas. On the wall behind me is a picture of a mule teamster who is very well known and loved in Arensasu Caldas. In this picture, he's bringing a bunch of goods to market. And I'll tell you something about this picture. I snapped this picture in a split second from the back of a Jeep on my way to Arensasu. It was sheer luck that I was able to capture that picture. Arriero, mule teamster. So in Neira, getting back around to tourism and what is how this relates to you, we have La Juana, where you can actually experience this legacy for yourself without going very far outside of Manizales while riding top of the line mules. These are not uh, burros. These are not little tiny donkeys. These are big mules. These are donkeys that are crossed with large uh, mares, horses, female horses, um, to produce these mules that are quite nice. I've actually ridden with Lawana. It's a great time. Uh, Jairo and Pamela are very sweet people. Pamela especially, she speaks English. She speaks very nice English. So when you do go out with her and with, with Jairo, you'll be able to understand what's happening. They receive um, a lot of tourists from around the world. And so we are having a special ride tomorrow, Saturday, June 29th. Now, there's still time for you to sign up, but you're going to have to email me uh, immediately so that we can get your insurance done. Okay. The ride comes with insurance. So how can you participate in the mule ride coming up tomorrow, Saturday, June 29th? Number one, send me an email at coffee access, A X I S coffee access travel at gmail.com. Again, that's coffee access travel at gmail. Excuse me. <laughs> at gmail.com. I kind of slipped out there. Um, give me your name, number of people, and I'll send you a link for all the information we need to find out how big you are, how much you weigh, um, what your riding level is, so that we can choose the appropriate animal. And don't worry, these mules are big, but they're not plotters. They are energetic, they're well-trained, and Haido has a special focus on having them well shoed, which is not as usual in Colombia. In Colombia, anyone who knows how to hammer a shoe on tends to go and cut and hammer and 
they call it good. Jairo uses very specialized um, shoers, horseshoers here in Colombia to make sure his mules have their feet in good condition and they're cut the way they're supposed to be. I grew up a horse girl, I know. You gotta have everything right. So, moving on. Come ride with us, it's gonna be fun. We are going, and if you don't get a chance to, to fill out the form and send it in to us, you can still meet us in the morning and we'll get you taken care of and we'll get you signed up. So, we are going to be meeting at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning next to Teatro de Fundadores in Manizales. So if you look at the side of the teatro, when you're looking at the Centro Comercial Fundadores, there's a little tiny park. Not the one, the one up by the theater where all the jeeps and buses go past, not the one down below, okay? Don't get confused. When you go down below to, teatro, to Centro Comercial Fundadores, the big mall there, traffic comes this way. At the on top, traffic comes this way, okay? So don't go to the lower uh, bus stop, come to the upper one. There's like a little park, okay? That little park is where we're gonna be meeting at 8 a.m. sharp on Saturday. If you wanna ride, try to be there early. Be there at 7.45. It's gonna take us about five hours to get there and come back. So what does the ride include? It includes transport from Manizales to the La Juana Ranch, it includes your lunch, it includes a two hour mule ride, it includes the animal, and it includes English guiding. So the cost is 390,000 pesos. That is a pretty uh, good price. Actually, it's a special price for my listeners. So come on, take advantage of it. Don't miss out on this opportunity. If you're unable to make it this time, but you still want to go for a ride with La Juana and experience the beauty of these mules, contact me, coffeeaccesstravel at gmail, and we'll find you another time to set up a ride. They do all kinds of private packages. Um, you can do multiple day rides. If you want to go three, four, five days, they've done it all. And they are wonderful people. So that's tomorrow, June 29th, next to Teatro Fanores, where we'll be meeting up to go on this mule ride. And that pretty much wraps it up for today. That's it for today. The Coffee Access Travel Podcast is your source for news, lifestyle, culture, and tourism information about this region. If you enjoyed our podcast, be sure to subscribe via patreon.com slash coffeeaccesstravel backslash where you will get updates anytime a new episode comes out for no more than the cost of a cup of coffee. You can also subscribe to us by searching Coffee Access Travel on YouTube, and we will have new episodes loaded. However, for right now, we're only going to be on YouTube because this is video. Video is fun. And if everything works out well, all these pauses that you're hearing on my recording are going to be taken out and filled in with all the B-roll footage that I have prepared for you. Eventually, we will do live episodes, but for now, we're filming our episodes, editing them, and uploading them. Once we're a little more agile with our equipment, once our studio is more set up, once we're able to sit down and do interviews, we will eventually be doing live podcasts, and that way you can participate. We want you to comment. We want you to write us. We want you to tell us what you want to know and what you want to hear. Also, if you own a local business that is of interest to local foreign residents and visitors, Email us at coffeeaccesstravel at gmail.com to learn how you can sponsor our episodes. Until next week, my name is Erin Donaldson, your host, signing off.